And then for anyone that would like to reference it, I am about to post the resource guide in the chat. Well, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us over this lunch hour. Um, we are very excited to have you here today. Um, this is our Tech Tuesday training on assistive technology for fall. Um, so on the screen, we described the pictures to make our uh, presentations as inclusive as possible. So you're gonna hear us doing some visual descriptions of what you're seeing on the screen. Um, so on the screen, you'll see, you see a picture of a, a home with a um, candy pole, um, telescoping pole attached to the um, the handle on the on the stairs, um, which allows you to shoot candy from your house down the stairs to your waiting trick or treaters. Um, it's black and and orange and has a shoot in the shape of a pumpkin at the end. Uh, you'll also see uh, our Michigan Assistive Technology Program logo, along with Michigan Disability Rights Coalition, who we work under. Can we go to the next slide, please? And hi there, this is Julissa Irwin. Um, welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Um, my image is on the right of the slide. Uh, pronouns are she, her, and hers. And on there, I have my email address, which is also in the resource guide. Um, the image on the screen of me particularly is a white woman wearing sunglasses and a gray shirt with my fly fishing vest on. And hi, everyone. My name is Laura Hall. Um, my pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm an AT specialist with the Michigan Assistive Technology Program. Um, the image on the slide is of me, and uh, I'm a white woman with uh, light brown hair. Uh, and that this image, I'm wearing a black shirt with red roses, and you can see my power chair in the background. Um, my email address is also on the slide as Laura at MDRC. Um, and I think that's it. Next slide. So getting to know you, um, we kind of collect this data during our presentations, just kind of that we need for our federal data and our funding. Um, so if you could type in the chat or unmute what county you're from. And if you identify as a person with a disability or a family member or a guardian of a person with a disability, representative of education, representative of health slash rehab, representative of community living, representative of technology or other identity. And on this slide, the image that we have is of a map of Michigan and it has just kind of all the little counties on there. So Nick, can you let us know who we have with us today, if there's anything in the chat? Yes, if any of you would like to. Abby said that she is a person with a disability. Welcome, Abby. And I am also a person with a disability and a frequent user of technology, so. Okay, well, while you're typing that in the chat, we can move on to the next slide. We also have from Anne, she is from Houghton and she is a representative of education. And Michael oh. said he's from Washtenaw County. He's a representative of technology. And Abby also said, oh, and I'm from Ingham. Um, and Amber is from Otsego County and she is a representative of education. Great, thank you so much for joining us all the way from Houghton. Um, hopefully it's still fall where you are. 
Can we go to the next slide, please? Okay, so just want to let you know a little bit about uh, Michigan Disability Rights Coalition or MDRC, uh, where our program is funded under. Um, so a little bit about us. MDRC envisions a world where people with disabilities live full lives within the community with equal rights, equity, and opportunities. They are valued as essential and vital members of the community. They can be their full selves and all of their identities in all aspects of the, their lives and have space for self-discovery to cultivate community and to, to develop pride. <clears throat> MDRC's mission is to cultivate disability pride and strengthen the disability movement by recognizing disability as a natural and beautiful part of human diversity while collaborating to dismantle all forms of oppression. So within this mission, we recognize that we are not just people with disabilities um, fighting for the rights of people with disabilities. We are people with disabilities who have many identities and those identities impact all of us in different ways and that we need to um, be conscious of the fact that we are also working to uh, dismantle ways that people are oppressed because of their other identities other than disability as well. Um, so the picture on this slide is of a younger woman, uh, darker skinned woman with braids who is sitting casually in her manual wheelchair. Can we go to the next slide? So uh, Michigan Assistive Technology Program, also known as MATP, um, we do a lot of things with AT. So what is AT? Um, AT is any tool, software, or app that can help people with disabilities, including older adults, do what they want to do. Um, MATP helps people with disabilities gain access to AT devices that can assist with low vision, hearing loss, cooking, eating, reading, organizing, communication, calendar reminders, transitioning, mental health, outdoor recreation, gaming, crafting, parenting, gardening, and connecting with friends and family. MATP is a free program for people with disabilities by people with disabilities. We provide trainings on how to use AT devices, and we have short-term and long-term loans of AT that are available to help identify what works and doesn't work for the person. And uh, the image on this slide is of a person using a cell phone. Okay, so we're going to get right into it and start with probably everybody's favorite fall topic, which is fall cleanup. Um, I say that sarcastically as I have leaves falling, immense leaves falling in my yard right now. Um, so starting with some rakes and leaves that can be um, helpful for cleanup. The first rake on the slide in the top left is called the amazing rake. Uh, this is more of a scoop type rake with um, a trigger handle that you can use to open the rake. You put it over a pile of leaves or some leaves and it enables you to pick up quite a bit of leaves at one time and then carry them to your bag, open it back up and let it back down. Um, this can be really good if it's hard for bending or stooping and you're looking for an easy way to get your, your leaves um, in the bag. I can say from experience in using this uh, product that it does take some grip strength to open and close the rake itself. Um, it was difficult for me to use as a wheelchair user just because of the the, um, the length of the rake as well as kind of that gripping uh, mechanism. But um, for someone who's standing and not looking to bend and stoop, it could be really helpful. Um, below that is another type of rake, which um, I also, I as a wheelchair user found very helpful. Um, it's an ex it's a telescoping extendable rake. Um, so it's pretty light. It's made of aluminum. Um, it has adjustable settings that um, at its full at its full length, it's 63 inches, but it can also telescope and compact um, to be shorter. The nice thing that I like about this rake is not only is it um, expandable on the handle to make it longer, but you can also expand the tines on the rake. So if you look at the right hand picture, it shows an image of 
the rake compacted to seven inches, which allows you to get into some smaller areas. Um, whereas in the picture on the left, it's fully expanded. And I believe that is at 32 inches. So that allows you to rake in a wide space. So very light, very um, ergonomic. Um, I was able to let rake leaves in my wheelchair. Um, and there are many types of these types of rakes out there. Um, we are just showing some examples. So I do want to make it clear that we're not endorsing any one type of rake or one type of product. Uh, these are just to generally give you an idea of what is out there. And then on the right hand side of the slide um, is something called the Ergi shovel. This is a bow rake um, for fall cleanup. This has another uh, extra handle on the end that you can use uh, to hold on with both hands to help you rake uh, the leaves up. So. The Ergi, um, the Ergi brand also has uh, snow shovels and other different types of uh, gardening rakes and things that have that handle that can make it uh, easier to rake. So those are a couple examples for raking. Can we go to the next slide? So there's also obviously the gathering and the bagging as well. Um, and the right hand, Sorry, in the left hand corner of this slide, we have a picture of a uh, lightweight cordless um, leaf blower, uh, which is battery operated. It um, only weighs about three pounds, easy to turn on. Um, this is something that you can hold um, easily with one hand and um, and blow your leaves. It also has an extension that makes it a bit longer if you're trying to get into some specific areas. And the fact that it's rechargeable is also helpful um, so that you're not working, worrying about um, um, plugging it in or gas powered or anything like that. So uh, that's one thing. Um, next to the leaf floor, we have something called the, the leaf taco, um, which I, uh, I really enjoy this product. Uh, this is a tarp, which is um, has a spring around it, and it's in a circular shape, and it allows you to put your leaves on the tarp. It's then got handles that you can close it up like a taco. Um, you fill it up, you can pour it into the bag, or you can also insert the leaf taco um, into the bag before you start raking and then rake the leaves uh, horizontally into the bag and then set the bag up and let the leaves fall in. Um, it does uh, do a very good job at bagging a whole lot of leaves at one time. It can be a little tricky to get into the bag without ripping it, um, depending on the quality of bags that you have. Um, but it enables you to do a lot of leaves at one time and, and eliminate a lot of the mess. So. Um, Similarly, in the lower left-hand corner are just some reusable uh, shoot-type bags that have um, a handle on the top um, so that you can carry it, and also on the bottom, I believe. Um, these are already kind of meant to be set up horizontally so that you can rake right into those reusable bags and then um, pull them up right to kind of compact things down or whatever you need to do. Um, there's also a lot of different types of canvas bags. Um, if you're looking to be eco-friendly or really need something, if, if holding that bag up is a really a problem, sometimes people prefer these, um, these canvas bags that already hold their shape. Uh, this one in particular has uh, holes on the top and the bottom too small holes um, to prevent pooling and allow drainage. So that's nice to kind of keep your leaves dry. Um, this is a 30 gallon uh, here. If you're looking for something a little more low tech and maybe you you like the paper bags, um, they're, they're what accepted with your leaf pickup. Uh, they do have these um, lawn bag collars too that are meant to go around the bag just to kind of hold them open. Uh, these are about $20 on Amazon. Um, so that's a, kind of a low-tech way to try to hold your bag as well. Um, I think I missed a picture in the upper corner next to the leaf taco. 
Um, it's a lawn and leaf shoot. It's made of corrugated cardboard. Um, they also have reusable types of these. It's a shoot that basically fits in the bag with a wider top so that uh, the top sits on top of the bag and allows you to um, put your leaves in that way so the, the bag doesn't close on you. And then in terms of gathering, um, there are many, many different types of hand rakes that you can buy commercially. Uh, the ones that we have are the green. They are in the shape of um, hands but with, with very long kind of rounded uh, ends to, to be able to rake and pull up those leaves. Uh, this allows you to use your hands to get quite a good amount of leaves in, in your hands before putting them in the bag. Instead of just using your hands every time, um, you can kind of gather these up and rake while you're picking up the leaves and putting them in the bag. Next slide, please. Um, this is probably my second least favorite part of fall cleanup, but um, gutters. Um, so we have a few products for gutters. The first one is um, an it's it's a gutter brush. Um, it's kind of in the shape of an, a telescoping L. It's got a telescoping um, handle to it, and then a brush on the top. It looks like an upside down L that's bristly and allows you to um, put the brush up uh, on your gutter to kind of sweep through uh, while you're cleaning your gutters. And um, I had wished I had used this product last year before I had tried the second product on the slide, which is the Orbit um, gutter cleaner. It hooks up to your hose and um, puts a good amount of pressure through the hose so that you're able to clean out your gutters with water and use the pressure of the water to kind of push through the leaves. Now, when I tried this, my gutters were extremely, extremely full and I couldn't really see what I was doing sitting down. Um, and so I ended up getting quite wet trying to use this myself, not being able to see the gutters and also trying to push things forward that were just too clogged. Um, but one of the things I like about this particular gutter cleaner, and again, there are many out there, is that there are these uh, foam grips on the handles that you can hold that make it a little bit easier to hold than some other models that I've seen. You can also adjust the spout on the top to the angle that you would like. Um, they do advertise that this product can be used as a power washer as well. Um, caveat, I have not tried it as a power washer. It does quite a bit of force. I think if you were trying to power wash maybe a smaller job, um, it might do a good job doing that. Uh, if you're trying to power wash your whole house, I'm not quite sure this would have the power that you were looking for. Um, so those are some ways to kind of clean your gutters. Um, Next and slide. also, funny oh. enough, I was just about to mention, um, they're both 18% off right now. So they are on both of them on a deal for about $30. Yeah, they're less expensive than you would think. Right. Yeah. Um, I know when it comes to fall cleanup, um, a lot of times things just need to be sprayed down, cleaned down, uh, wiped down. So we wanted to include some hoses and sprayers that... Um, that are more adaptive in a way for people with disabilities. Um, the first picture on the slide is of a hose called the Flexzilla, F-L-E-X-Z-I-L-L-A. -L -L um, this is a hose um, that you can get in different sizes. So I think anywhere from like 25 feet to 100 feet, maybe even 250. Um, what's nice about this hose is that it's very lightweight. It's made of a polymer blend material that um, that allows it to be more um, durable than other um, other hoses that you may find that are lightweight. It also has aluminum fittings um, for a tight fit on your sprayer and your hose. Uh, these are the same kind they use on aircrafts, so um, you're able to get a pretty tight fit there. Uh, the second hose on this slide is of an expandable garden hose. Again, these come in different lengths. Uh, when water flows through this hose, it expands up to three times its um, size. So it does expand, uh, get wider, and then coil itself. And it is very lightweight. Um, again, I believe it's under three pounds. 
Um, these are often made of like a, a canvas or like a, almost like a bungee cord type material. And I have noticed, depending on the type that you buy, if you're um, pulling it through yard debris and sticks, these might have a tendency to tear. Um, so depending on what you're using it for, um, you may need to look at how durable you need it to be. The expandable garden hoses come in a variety of um, different, uh, with a variety of different materials. I have some, had some that are very lightweight, um, but almost made out of kind of a paper thin canvas kind of product. Um, and when I looked up the expandable garden hoses, I thought that this, this was a pretty durable looking one. Um, you just kind of have to watch what you're dragging these through, I think, sometimes. And then in terms of um, sprayers and hoses, I've got a couple examples of some adaptive nozzles that may help if you're not able to squeeze those triggers that you need to hold down with the garden hose, sometimes for a very long time. Um, the first one is called a fireman's sprayer nozzle. Um, you may notice that on the top of the nozzle is a um, handle that you can press back and forth uh, like you would have on a fireman's hose. And this has got an easy grip, so you can grip it with your whole hand, use your whole hand to turn the hose on and off. Um, the fireman's spur does have quite a bit of pressure, but it does have eight different settings that you can set it to. So it can also be used for gardening and watering and things like that as well. Uh, but just has that nice handle if you're not able to hold that sprayer uh, nozzle trigger down. Um, the final item on this slide is um, called the Melnor Relax Grip Watering Wand. And this attaches again to your hose. It has eight different settings. Um, what I like about this product is that it has, it doesn't have a uh, trigger that you have to squeeze. There is a, um, a thumb, I'm trying to think of how to say this. Um, how do I say it, Jalisa? I'm, I'm blanking on my words. I guess a thumb turning on and off switch. Yeah, there's a lever that you can use your thumb to press up or down um, and adjust the pressure that way. So really you're only needing to use your one finger or one thumb to kind of press the lever forward and bring it back. It's very easy to turn on and off. Very easy to turn to the different settings in the nozzle. Um, it does, um, it does, this is a shorter um, nozzle. I, th I believe it's 15 inches. And I did see that when I was looking it up again, it said size small. So they may have these in different sizes, but I've only been able to find the 15 inch so far. Um, but it's possible that they make these in larger sizes as well. It also has kind of a good uh, rubber coating and ergonomic grip to it to help you get it on your hose. That's that. Can we go to the next slide? All right. So we're still doing some fall cleanup, some fall pruning here. Um, I have different very varying things for pruning. Um, the, at the very top of the slide is a long handled uh, Fiskars pruning shear. Um, the thing that makes this one different than other pruning shears is that one, it's extra long, but um, a lot of times they have a rope on it that you pull to make the shears at the bottom kind of close. This one has a ball and you can also use your other hand to pull down. So you kind of get the double power of pulling down. Um, another image on the slide is it an electric pruning, pruning shear. And so this has its battery operated. Um, the battery life on it is actually pretty decent. And I think you're able to cut um, up to an in inch thick with these pruning shears. Um, on the bottom of the slide, I have Fisker's uh, Power Gear 2 pruning shears. And what these do, it just makes it easier to kind of grip and cut. Um, I just actually bought my grandma a set for her birthday and she absolutely loves them. Um, I think Abby has bought a set for her dad. We're, we're just buying them all the time um, because they're so great. And then on the right hand of the slide, I have a one hand 
battery operated mini chainsaw. Um, this is very lightweight. It's easy to use. It's just a little finger trigger. Um, it does have the guard on it. So you have the safety feature on there. Um, and this lasts pretty decent time as well. I think uh, it lasts up to like the battery life lasts up to like three hours, which is pretty good. And I think the maximum you can cut that you would want to cut through is probably about, I don't know, four inches at most. And next slide. And now we get into the fun stuff. <laughs> Fall camping. Um, it's not for everyone, but it is something that is fun in Michigan to go visit uh, maybe the UP or Upper Michigan or anywhere to see the different fall colors. Um, so first I have a easy pop-up tent. Um, this tent is 10 foot tall. Um, and the cool thing about it is all the poles are attached to the material of the tent. So there's no pesky poles or anything like that. Everything's just attached to there. And then you just slide the poles up and it goes to 10 foot. Um, I also have a headlamp on here. Um, so you just place the headlamp onto your head and then there's an on and off switch. And I believe it has three brightness settings, um, which is really useful just so that you can have, you know, full motion of your hands and be able to pick up multiple things. Um, I know Laura enjoyed using this and she, I don't even know if she knew that it existed when we mm -hmm. went camping um, because she is a wheelchair user. She was able to operate her wheelchair and also carry in, I think it was s'mores stuff. Correct me if I'm wrong, Laura. <laughs> I think so. And it was just nice to be able to see your path when you're rolling. Um, you can't always see if you're going to fall into a hole or if there's a crack in the sidewalk. So even just doing um, some, since it's getting darker sooner, um, I like the idea of having this type of headlamp because it does keep your hands free. Yes, and I don't just use this for camping. I, I mean, I use it to go tracking in the woods. I can use it for hiking. Um, recently used it for e-biking. Um, and when my daughter was little, I wore it to cut her fingernails because, I mean, it just bright, brightened everything up. Um, so awesome tool to have. I think that everyone needs one and they come in all different shapes and sizes and colors and everything like that. Um, another fun thing that I have on here is a extendable telescoping marshmallow roasting stick. Um, this has a grip on it that is a non-slip rubber, rubber handle, and it's also heat resistant. And this telescopes up to, I believe it's 47 inches. Um, so you can keep your distance away from the fire. Um, so yeah, it's it's pretty neat. Um, and they also come with little protective um, protective tips on it because the ends are kind of pointy. And I, for this particular uh, roasting stick, I wouldn't recommend putting like a sausage or chicken or anything on it. Um, it's really good for hot dogs and marshmallows. Um, and then in the right hand corner, I have a different type of telescoping marshmallow roasting stick. And this one, um, like I said, it extends. But it also, instead of sitting there and roasting the marshmallow um, by turning the stick itself, this is has a fishing reel handle on it. So you're able to reel it like a fishing pole and it makes the stick rotate. So you never have to worry about having a burnt marshmallow unless if you like burnt marshmallows. <laughs> and then something to keep in mind when camping in the fall, um, a lot of times if you're using an air mattress or just a sleeping bag on the ground, uh, the coldness from the ground sne sneaks up um, through your sleeping bag or air mattress, which makes you cold in return. So one way to solve that is a uh, camping cot. Uh, we have, I think, two different kinds in our inventory. They're weight inclusive. Um, I believe that they go up to 600, this specific one goes up to 600 pounds and the other one I believe is 800. Um, it's folding. I think it is a pretty heavy piece of equipment. I think it 
weighs 17 pounds, which is quite a lot for what it is, um, folds up and goes into a bag. And then it's two foot off the ground when you have it all folded out. I can imagine, Jalisa, if you're using some type of mobility device too, having yes. something that was off the ground might might be helpful in getting up into a walker or a wheelchair, yes. or something like yeah, that. Yeah, or transferring, yes. And next slide. And then we also have fall picking. Um, so the first image on the slide is of a little basket, and that uh, connects to the Fisker uh, pruning, the long-handled one. Um, so basically what you do is you point the pole up towards apples or pears or whatever kind of fruit that you're picking, and you can snip, um, I guess, the stem of the apple, pear, whatever fruit, and it will fall right into the basket. And then the slide after that, this is the Johnny Harvest Bucket. Um, it's kind of like a kidney bean shaped. And so that's made so that it kind of can go around your waist and hug your waist. And it has um, a harness on it that wraps around your shoulders and back. And the back also has a pad on it. So for comfort. And this guy here is picking tomatoes, I think, which I've never seen tomato plants that big, but, you know, it's pretty cool. Um, the next image is of a berry picking bucket. Um, we put it on here because you also could put, put apples and uh, any other fall fruit that you want in there. Um, and the difference between this one is that it wraps around your waist. Um, and it kind of, I guess, has a fanny pack look to it. It holds the lid to the bucket right in there. And then it also has a pocket for either your cell phone or your pruning shears, whatever you decide to put in there. There are things like um, um, harvesting aprons and things too that you can get that you can just stick the apples kind of in a pouch in the apron. So there are other options other than buckets, but we found that these are um, most popular right now in terms of what um, we have people asking for and looking for. Next slide, please. Okay, so getting into a bit more Halloween fun, we're going to talk about um, accessible Halloween costumes. Uh, so the first picture on this slide is of um, a young boy in a wheelchair who is um, dressed as a dragon for Halloween. There are uh, cardboard cutouts that go around his wheel um, spokes, and um, there are wings that attach to the spokes in the chair. He's also in a one piece, uh, looks like one or two piece, I can't quite tell, a uh, dragon costume that comes with a um, mask that fits under his chin. So um, it's a pretty neat costume for a wheelchair user. I will say that um, I'm quite jealous now of the way that um, accessible Halloween costumes have become more popular and commercialized. Um, when I was a kid trick-or-treating, it was so hard to find a costume that would work with the wheelchair or any other type of mobility device. Um, you know, I couldn't go as a crayon or something really, really bulky because I couldn't sit in my chair and actually have that costume on. So I, I say I'm jealous, but I'm also very excited that um, that markets have picked up on this need and are now meeting this need for kids um, for Halloween. Uh, the second picture on the slide is of a, a young boy in a reverse walker wearing a Batman costume. Um, so the abdominal panel, so the muscle panel in the stomach, the arms uh, and the legs all have... Um, removable, uh, I'm sorry, closures that, closures that open and close via Velcro to help to get to leg braces or any other uh, type of need that you may have on your body uh, where you need to access that through your costume. Um, it comes with a, a cape, which is cool, and a helmet, um, but this just allows better access to like leg braces or if somebody has a tracheotomy or something that they need to access in the chest area or on the arm area, um, this makes it easier for um, for that to be accessed. And then the second, uh, I'm sorry, the third picture on the right of the screen 
is of another um, accessible Halloween costume of a um, a witch in a, in a carriage with a cat. Um, so again, this is a, a cardboard or a plastic cutout that goes um, on the side of the wheelchair and has the witch's costume with the hat. Um, just a, a way for people to um, I think this is important not only because it includes everyone, but it also celebrates our sister technology and shows that we can use our sister technology in creative ways and be proud of that um, while we're showing off our Halloween costumes. So these are all sold by um, Target. Uh, they have a line of products called Hide and Eek. That's H-Y-D-E and EEK. Uh, Meyer has also begun selling costumes uh, that are sensory friendly uh, for children with disabilities. These They have uh, different types of snaps and fabrics and access points uh, so that if kids have uh, issues with sensory, sensory issues with uh, clothing, uh, they're making them adaptable with different types of fabric and things that can be more uh, calming and settling. So we applaud Meyer for doing that. Um, how are we doing on time, Jalisa? We are at 12.42. Okay. Uh, what do you think? I would just, I would just continue and then at the end we'll show it. Okay. Um, what we were thinking about showing if we have time, um, which I don't know if we are, but we will at the end if we do, is a website called magicwheelchair.org. Uh, this is a nonprofit that builds uh, what they call epic uh, Halloween costumes for kids at no cost to children or families. Um, they recruit engineers and designers and craftsmen people that make these Halloween costumes that are just amazing using their um, assistive technology. I think when Jalisa and I looked, we saw the How to Train Your Dragon from the, the How to Train Your Dragon movies, um, Aladdin's Carpet Ride. I mean, just all sorts of things. So if we don't get that, if we don't get to that today, I encourage you to look at that website on your uh, resource guide, which Nick has put in the chat, but hopefully we'll get a chance to take a peek at that at the end. Um, can we go to the next slide, please? Okay, so this is not necessarily um, this is not necessarily assistive technology. We have more tips for an inclusive Halloween. So um, just some things to think about um, as you're as you're holding Halloween this year. Uh, maybe consider sitting at the end of your driveway. If your house has stairs, you have a steep driveway. It could be challenging for some kids to knock on your door. So sitting close to the road um, doesn't only help those who are on crutches and are in a wheelchair, but it could also feel more inviting to an anxious trick-or-treater. I know when I was a kid, I could never get up to somebody's house, and my sister had to get the candy for me. And they didn't always believe her that she had a sister in a wheelchair right behind her and couldn't see me. Uh, so uh, this would have been nice, I think, if, if I had been able to see people and show off my costume a little bit more. So just something to think about. Um, another idea is to keep on outdoor lights. There can be cracks or bumps in, in your sidewalk or your driveway that can make it navigating the path um, especially tricky and bright lights can help with that to kind of show, show those so that people don't trip and fall. Um, describing the candy that you give out. Um, I think this could be helpful for any child, but if you notice that a child is blind or has limited vision, um, you could describe the types of candy that you're offering and let them make a choice um, based on that on that um, description. And going along with that, um, giving kids extra time. Sometimes it can be difficult for kids with disabilities to reach quickly or accurately for a piece of candy, especially if they're trigger with there's other trick or treaters in the mix. Um, or children might not be able to uh, know, especially what candy they're picking so it might be good to let them know what you have to offer and just trying to not rush anyone through the candy picking process um, it's something we want everyone to enjoy and sometimes for kids with disabilities this can be particularly uh, stressful or um, feel like they're being pressed to make a decision right away 
And um, you may also also want to consider offering that edible treats. Um, some children are limited in what they can eat and how they can eat. So we have, you know, children that have um, sensitivities. They may have peanut allergies. They may be diabetic. There may be a host of reasons why some children can't eat candy. So offering things like stickers, bubbles, glow sticks um, can be a great substitute for candy. Um, the next one is being mindful of your decorations. Uh, some For some kids with disabilities, they may have a heightened sensitivity to loud noises or bright lights or unexpected sounds. So if you could minimize or turn off the spooky decorations, um, sometimes that can reduce the chances of just startling kids with disabilities. I know it, it's, it's a lot of fun for some people, but it can also be very um, stressful and startling for other people. Um, and the last one is try not to judge. Um, some children may not tolerate certain textures of clothing well, so they not be, not be wearing a costume. Um, I know for some people, uh, trick-or-treating, you know, if you're not wearing a costume, you can't get a piece of candy. Um, and that doesn't really mean that kids should miss out on the fun. Also, um, keeping in mind that some, some kids may not be able to say the traditional trick-or-treat phrase, um, because of anxiety or because they don't communicate verbally or um, just for any other reason. I think sometimes we have these expectations that um, the kid must be dressed up and they must say trick or treat in order to get candy. And it really um, should be fun for everyone. So just some tips to keep in mind um, and making everyone feel included um, is what MDRC is all about. And so I hope that these uh, tips have been um, helpful and something to think about. Can we go to the next slide, please? Okay. So if you're interested in learning more about our organization, receiving trainings um, and assistive technology demonstration, which is, I don't know if we explained this in the beginning, Julissa, if, if you're looking to um, try any of these devices, want to see how they work, you can set up a one-on-one -on -one, uh, meeting with one of our AT specialists who can show you how the product works. We can loan the product to you for a certain period of time. You can try it out in your own home and see if it works. Um, sometimes it takes getting to using that um, device in your own home, in your own environment for an extended period of time to know whether it will work for you. Uh, those are all things that we do for, in our program. And so we urge you to contact us. Uh, my email is laura at mymdrc, and Jalisa's email is jalisa at mymdrc, and you can also find our general contact information um, at the bottom of this slide as well, including our phone number, email, and website. Is there a next slide? Just our ending slide, I guess. <laughs> That's it. And um, one thing that uh, we also wanted to show you today is another way to be inclusive, if you're wondering, is um, here's the sign for Halloween. So I'm using like my hands cupped kind of in a U shape over my eyes, like a mask, pulling them back and forth. Uh, I double checked with our interpreter that I was doing this correctly. So you could also look at our interpreter. Uh, there's an alternate sign for Halloween, which is using your two fingers sideways and putting them at your eyes and pulling them out, outward, um, away from your face. So happy Halloween, everyone. Does anybody have any questions? Nick, were you going to say something? I was just going to ask, do we want to show the magic wheelchair? Yes, we've got a few minutes. I would love for people to see this. It's it is really 1249, cool. so we have some time. OK. OK. I'll share my screen. And if anyone has to go, um, we have a short survey. Um, if you'd like to fill it out before you head out, um, Nick will put that in the chat along with our resource guide again. And, and thank you any... everyone for joining. Sorry. Yes, thank you. And Laura, was there a specific part of the site you wanted me to show? I just kind of really like the scroll through. I was going to describe some of the pictures. So 
on the top there. So we've got a kid in a Mario Kart using his wheelchair, uh, like a princess carriage with Prince Charming. Uh, there is like, uh, oh, geez. sorry, we skipped ahead. Uh, someone made an entire race car out of a wheelchair, uh, the monster race car, maybe having something to do with NASCAR. There's an airplane. Uh, there's a picture of the, the a dragon made out of a wheelchair, another airplane. Uh, this is all nonprofit. This has one where a person can hit certain buttons, probably to speak trick or treat or those things. Um, if you're a My Little Pony fan, uh, there's a carriage with the My Little Ponies, including uh, Rainbow. Oh, I forgot her name. Rainbow Dash? Rainbow Dash, yes. Uh, let's, know and stuff. There's one down here. Someone is a hot dog. Is, is that what that is there in the lower? This one? Yes. Can I see that? That is not a hot dog. Oh, sorry. Zoom. Definitely I not a hot dog. Flash. <laughs> <laughs> it won't let zoom. Flash. Let me try this. There we go. There you go. That's some better pictures. So Zoom. Abby I'll show you. In here. here is the not hot dog. Oh, that must be like some sort of rocket or flash. I think it's a flash, but the one next to it's really cool. It's based off of Stranger Things. It has the Demi Gorgon behind the power chair user. I wasn't and, even sure that was the Demi Gorgon. Thank you for identifying. That oh yeah, area. and there the do, there's a black lab with a. Uh, it looks like kind of like flower petals if you're not familiar with the Demi Gorgon and it has like it's red with like some teeth in it and that's around the the dog so it looks like one of the demo dogs from Stranger Things. I didn't Things. even see the dog that's so that's awesome. <laughs> I have a service dog I'd love to include him as part of my Halloween costume. So every year um, you can apply for a grant um, for them to to uh, build something for your child. I don't know how many they accept um is that Stan Lee up there or is that mm -hmm. so there's someone in a costume with Stan Lee who's a Marvel comic designer looks like okay. a predator predator costume predator the, uh, alien versus predator very yeah, it cool. looks like they're at like a comic-con or something very cool and one of our co-workers made a, a good point the other day that um Kids, you know, when they have Halloween costumes and they're young, don't always just wear the Halloween costume on Halloween. There are days that you can bring them to the zoo and um, just different events all throughout the year where kids like to dress up in um, heroes and villains type events. So I really love that there's an organization that that will do this and that we have um, that we have organizations like this nonprofit that are committed to making accessible Halloween costumes. We got some minions on here, a helicopter. That's a unicorn, a light up unicorn. I think the kids themselves define what they want. Um, so some of these are really cool because you can see that. Um, not only is it a unicorn, but it lights up and it sparkles and it's feathery and um... and it's not just like it's power chair users, it's uh, manual wheelchairs, it's walkers, it's strollers, it's mm -hmm. all kinds. There's one that they made a school bus out of. It's the Fortnite bus. The Fortnite bus. <laughs> Fortnite. I'm so glad we have you. The yeah. battle bus. That's from the yeah battle bus. <laughs> that is awesome. His friends are just dropping off the back. Yeah, with parachutes. <laughs> That's the thing too. If you have a really cool costume and can show that off, like how much, you know, um, how much that can mean to someone to feel included to have this really cool costume to show up to school at a Halloween party or at the, you know, the Halloween uh, gathering and give that kid a special moment that they might not normally have. So thanks so much for scrolling through there, Abby, and giving us an idea. No problem, anytime. 
Nick, do we have any questions, comments as before we wrap up? Nothing in the chat right now, but it is 12.55, so we have five more minutes if anyone has any further questions or comments or anything helpful that they know about for AT for Halloween or fall that we didn't talk about. Yeah, definitely. If there's something we're missing, let us know. If there's something you'd never seen before that um, that surprised you or that you thought was really useful, um, we're happy to, we'd like to know that as well. We also, I didn't include it and in, oh. Sorry, no, I, me and Destin are watching and he wants to know the sign for trick or treating. Or trick or treat. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I think I know this one. I'm gonna. The interpreter is probably, hopefully, gonna help me. <laughs> I think you hold your one finger. Your no, your one finger up like you're knocking on the door. Knock, knock. Trick or treat. That is the sign for like truly to trick someone, okay. like to like play a joke on someone. I don't know like a true sign I like I typically explain it so I'll say like like you know you like so this is the sign for a door okay so like maybe you can like knock on the door and then like you ask for candy like I don't know Abby do you remember a sign I've never seen a specific sign for trick or treat it's more like a concept and yeah, I, like I would, if that makes sense. Yeah, like trick or treat, finger spelling, and then explaining. Yeah, I have I seen the knocking on the door and then kind of like the passing of the candy bucket. So, Dustin, um, one cool thing about sign language is that people develop sort of their own signs sometimes to represent things for them, or it can look different in different regions of the state. Um, so while American Sign Language is kind of universal, there's some little tricks to it that people have their own signs. But um, thank you for that question. That is, that is so cool. I'm glad you want to know the signs. And on the resource guide, there is um, a link to 25 Halloween ASL signs. So. And then I just cool. wanted to let you know about in the chat and just wanted to thank us. She said thank you for, the present. I would assume, the presentation you for coming today no 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 thank you <laughs> well if there's nothing else uh thanks again for coming so much if you get a chance to fill out our survey we'd really appreciate it it helps us give us feedback on how we're doing what you'd like to see more of um helps us collect some of that federal data so uh thanks again and nick can you uh Give an update about our next Tech Tuesday. Yes. So our next Tech Tuesday will be in two weeks, actually, um, on October 25th. And we will be talking about assistive technology for the winter. Because as much as the fall is here, we are in Michigan and the winter sneaks up on you real fast. So we'll have a lot of helpful stuff in there about stuff for winter and the snow and just really just help you get ready for that snow season. That will be with Jalisa again. Right? <laughs> yes, that will be with me Ooh. again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then, Nick, I think you could stop the Facebook Live and we could probably stop the recording. And thank you.